Early polling in a crowded primary field is notoriously unreliable and fickle. More often than not, it's just a proxy for name recognition. There's one poll recently that I think gives a sense of just how wide open the Democratic race for the presidential nomination is. A plurality of voters in a recent USA Today Suffolk University poll named someone entirely new as their preferred candidate in the field. Well, today we got the presidential announcement of someone almost none of the Democratic primary voters has ever heard of. In other words, someone entirely new. I belong to a generation that is stepping forward right now. We're the generation that lived through school shootings, that served in the wars after 9-11. And we're the generation that stands to be the first to make less than our parents, unless we do something different. Pete Buttigieg is the 37-year-old mayor of South Bend, Indiana, with a bio that reads like it was written by Aaron Sorkin, an out-married gay Afghanistan vet and Rhodes Scholar who was elected mayor of his hometown at the age of 29. Today, he announced he's forming an exploratory committee to run for president. And joining me now is Pete Buttigieg. Um, good to have you on. Mayor, um, why are you running for president? Well, I believe that we need new voices. It's time for a new generation to step forward to offer leadership. And uh, as you noted, people are looking for something entirely new. Of all the people in the United States, why should you have the most powerful job in the world? Well, uh, I get that you wouldn't expect to hear this from the youngest person in the conversation, but a lot of it has to do with experience. Uh, I have a different experience from a lot of the other people stepping forward. The experience of being an executive, being responsible for the well-being of the 100,000 residents in our city. The experience of being sent overseas on the orders of a president. Uh, experience that helps me understand how the decisions that are made in Washington affect people at the level of everyday life. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I have have more years of government experience than the president of the United States. I have uh, more executive experience than the vice president, and I have more military experience than the two of them put together. Uh, my experience, my perspective, and again, that of a new generation with a different outlook from the industrial Midwest and a city that, in my view, proves that resentment and nostalgia is not the formula for the middle of the country. I can't wait to share that with the rest of America. What does that mean? But new, there could be new visions or new approaches that are good and new approaches that are bad. New doesn't necessarily mean good. What does that concretely mean, the, the newness or the sort of fresh eyes you bring being 37 and coming from where you're coming from? Well, for one thing, I think you just look at issues differently. You know, I'm thinking a lot about uh, 2054. That's the year when I'll be the current age of the current president. And I think uh, if you're making plans for what it's going to be like then, you have a different sense of urgency around issues like climate change. If you know that your generation is going to be picking up the bill for reckless tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires, uh, you have a sense of urgency around getting our policies right when it comes to taxation. What, what, I know you've run for statewide office once before, I'm not mistaken, uh, state treasurer, uh, and were defeated in that race. Why not run for statewide office, seek some other, other office? It, it is fairly unusual for someone to go from, well, it's unprecedented, I think, in American history, to go from, from being the mayor, say, of town 100,000, to president of the United States. A lot of things right now in American politics are unprecedented, and I don't believe in running for an office so that you can someday run for another office. I ran for mayor of my hometown because I looked at what the city needed, I looked at what I brought to the table, and I thought that there was a match. That was the same reason I ran for chair of the DNC. I didn't become the chair of the DNC, but I'm glad we got in there, and I'm glad we were able to introduce different ideas into that conversation. And right now, when I look at what's going on in our country, when I look at what's going on in our party, I think we need a different kind of voice. A voice, for example, that's comfortable talking about themes like freedom, which we've allowed conservatives to kind of take from our party, rather than insisting that there's a lot more than government that can make you unfree, that you're not free if you can't sue a credit card company that gets caught ripping you off, that you're not free if you're a woman and your male boss gets to tell you what your health care decisions are going to be based on his politics. We need to be ready to come with a different kind of vocabulary that will answer that question that hand-wringing Democrats keep asking, how are we going to fit our values on a bumper sticker? I um, think we can do it. It. I think it's freedom, democracy, and security, and I'm eager to share that message with the country. You're, you're in Washington for, the, for your launch today. Um, and this is a question I think is the most important question for every Democratic candidate in the field. What is your first big piece of legislation if you got elected president with a Democratic House and Democratic Senate? 
Well, we've got to make fundamental repairs to our democracy. That means legislation to secure access to the vote and a package that could also include some profound structural reforms. The Electoral College is, at this point, indefensible. And there are a lot of other things happening in our political structure that make it so difficult to deal with any of the other issues, from climate to health care to economic security, that we've got to make sure that we have repaired our democracy at the outset. Should we leave Afghanistan immediately? And if not immediately, when should we leave? We've got to bring an end to endless war. Uh, we are getting to the point where people will be sent to Afghanistan very soon who weren't even alive in 2001. Now, what you don't do is notify your Pentagon by tweet that you're going to be pulling out. But there is no question that we need to bring a close to that engagement. Uh, and all of our— Wait, let me just stop you there, because I've heard that for most of my adult life. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what does that mean concretely? Well, I think concretely it means uh, engaging with the parties on the ground, making sure there's some hope of stability there, but also recognizing that we can't be the indefinite guarantor of uh, economic development and democracy in the AFPAC region. It's just not realistic. Obviously, we have a counterterrorism mi mission that explained how we got there in the first place. Uh, now it's time to make sure that we're focused here at home. What did you came out uh, in public life as a mayor? What did you learn from that experience? Well, one thing I learned is that uh, people really will look at you based on what you have to offer. I, I came out at a time when Mike Pence was the governor of my home state of Indiana. I was in the middle of a re-election campaign, but it was a time when I wanted to get in on with my personal life, and I realized that meant coming out. And I wound up getting re-elected with 80 percent of the vote. Uh, so I think it shows that if you give people a chance to evaluate you on your merits, uh, then uh, people will do right by you. But I'm not naive, either. I know that there is a struggle for LGBTQ. LGBTQ equality that continues to this day. In fact, there are a lot of parts of my home state where you can still get fired just yeah. because of who you are. Pete Buttigieg, uh, thank you so much for taking some time to join us tonight. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.